So I thought I would show you guys me making a couple of jar terrariums. Now these are her bottles and I got a commission. Somebody wanted me to make a couple her bottle terrariums and I didn't get a specific brief. They just wanted me to make a terrarium like how, like what they had seen on my Instagram of the other jar terrariums. So I'm starting off with a false bottom. Now the gravel, it helps with drainage and it also means that the soil won't be sitting directly in the water so it doesn't like become stagnant. And then I have some mesh in there to stop the soil from mixing in with the gravel because you want that separation to again stop things like stagnating and then that drainage layer also helps the like circulation of water so it can evaporate, condensate, fall back in because since it's a closed terrarium um, you have that kind of closed environment effect. And now I'm putting in my soil mix. My soil mix has like some compost, dry leaves, um, bark, and charcoal and that's a nice healthy soil mix oh and also some sand that's a nice healthy soil mix to keep the plants happy um, the charcoal stops the water again from going stagnant um, and it just keeps the water sweet it, the charcoal also gives a place for the springtails to, um, to kind of lay their eggs and stuff which I'll talk more about the springtails in a little bit um, and yeah so that's just a nice healthy soil mix and then I'm using a fan brush to kind of sweep the soil into like a little incline so that it just creates a little bit of interest and I don't want to put too much soil um, I don't need to put a lot especially in such a small container um, but I was just putting a little bit more so I can just kind of like get that incline look and now for adding like the landscaping so in this one I'm going to use a stick covered in some lichen as like kind of the main landscaping element so I'm just cutting that down it's quite a small twig um, especially for like the size of the jar and I'm going to use a tweezer to place that in actually I use tweezers throughout the process as, as well as a skewer because again it's so small um, I just need the tweezer to help me out a little bit um, and these tweezers, they're a little bit difficult to work with because they don't open very wide. So when I'm trying to like put um, pebbles in, it's a bit tricky to get the tweezer to hold on. But I did get some other like tools, like tweezers and scissors and stuff that I can use now in my to, in my future terrarium builds. So you'll see that later on in the vlog. Um, but if you want to jump ahead, you can check out the like the time slot bits at the bottom of the video if you want to like see what I'm talking about now so I wanted to put in like a plant to kind of just add some little interest as well once I added the pebble and the twig so the plant I'm adding is I think it's if I'm saying this right Tradascantia chrysophila I think I'm saying that right but I will have it up on screen and um, it's a tropical plant and it can get quite bushy and everything but like a, t a traditional terrarium you won't really go in and intervene and prune things but if you want to you can go in and prune things so sometimes I would sometimes I wouldn't um, so the future owner of this terrarium can go in and prune it if they want to or just let everything just grow wild um, it's all up to the owner's choice um, so at the moment I'm just letting the terrariums I have just kind of grow happily um, the only reason I would intervene is if I'm seeing things kind of dying back um, then I would like maybe intervene and like take out what doesn't work and then put in what will work so yeah so you can see um, once when I was trying to plant the plant or the cutting I should say I kind of like bounced everything so I'm just like replacing and getting the position right how I want it and because the tweezers don't open very wide when I was holding things like sticks and rocks it was really hard for to, to then get the tweezer to let go because it was kind of like open wider so I would kind of have to use the skewer to kind of hold the thing down while I try to get rid like move the tweezer off of it so I'm looking forward to using my new tools especially my new tweezers those will be really useful and then I put a clump of moss at the back I think I put some kind of star moss at the back I thought that would create some like nice height and then I'm just kind of putting some 
other moss. Um, I like to put multiple mosses in there to create different textures and add different colors because some of the moss is dark green, light green, um, sap green, yellowy green. So I like to kind of mix it up just to make it look a little bit more natural because like in the wild you wouldn't just see one thing. You know, you would see like mixes of stuff. So I like to try to emulate nature a little bit which is also why I don't really leave any empty spaces um, so yeah so I'm just placing those and then there I am adding a bit more star moss I believe and that was pretty much it like for this one I just kind of just added a few more pieces of moss to fill things in and then it was done so for this one I'm taking a well it's not a log. It looks like a log in this because of the size. What is a stick with some like moss on the end? I thought it was really nice. So I put that in with the moss facing forward. And then um, I have some white pebbles from Wilco's actually. It's they, I like to have like the natural colored pe pebbles as well as some white colored pebbles if I want like to create more contrast. Um, so I thought I would have one with natural pebbles and one with these white ones so I had quite a nice big one in there because I knew it probably get covered up quite a bit so sometimes it's nicer to put like bigger ones in because the moss will most likely grow over them at some point and I also put a stick with some lichen on there like to behind the pebble just to kind of create a little bit of interest and then I went in and added some more moss and this one was pretty simple. Um, I didn't put any cuttings in this one. I wanted to kind of make things a little bit different. I think I also put star moss in there. I really like that kind of star moss. I think it's really pretty. Um, oh, and don't quote me on that. Anything that I call it, I'm just literally calling because that kind of is what it looks like to me. Um, I don't know if that's the proper names for them. Because, um, like, on the stick, there's kind of like a feathery looking moss. Um... So yeah, and I added some more of that kind of feathery looking moss in like some gaps and stuff just to kind of fill it in, to kind of encourage the moss to maybe grow along the stick. Um, and that was it to set up the terrarium. Well, when it comes to like the moss and stuff, I'll be adding the sprinters and some water in a little bit. So I'm covering the covers in some red double-sided tape. The red double-sided tape is a really strong double-sided tape. And I'm covering them with that because I'm going to cover it with some fabric. Now, um, the original, like one of my original terrarium jars, I covered the cover, which was also a plastic cover, with some twine um, using hot glue. And I think I'll do that next time because um, sometimes I could use fabric scraps and sometimes I can use twine because I really do like the twine. But um, I had forgotten that I'd used twine before because I think that would have looked really nice. But... Yeah, I like it with the denim as well. Like, I use denim. I thought it would just kind of fit the more kind of rugged looking look. Um, a little bit more natural because I like, I cut the denim with some pinking shears so that it wouldn't tear. And it, again, it would also look a little bit more interesting. So I cut all the fabric to size and then I stuck it on and I would have to trim a little bit because I did like leave a little bit extra just to make sure I can adjust it once I've stuck it down. And I do like... A strip of fabric to wrap around the cover and then just a square fabric to go on top that kind of nestles in the wrap around piece of fabric um, and stick that down and that'll stay um, that red double-sided tape is really good I use it on acetate paper with fabric it's a really good tape which is why I used it because um, I want I wanted to last I wanted to like last so yeah um and yeah, once I cut, once I stuck it down and I trimmed everything, um, made sure that there wasn't any kind of loose threads that could get caught. Um, and then I would test to kind of see what it looks like on the bottle. And once I did that, that was it. So after that, I spooned in some springtails. It, it's, it's a little bit tricky to get the springtails into the herb bottles because, again, they're quite small. So what I did was I poured some extra water into the tub that I, I have one of my springtail cultures in. And um, then just kind of spooned them up. And when I did that, I was able to water it as well. So after I did that, I just kind of sprayed down the edges and cleaned up the inside of the glass with um, like a Q-tip and a paper towel with like a tweezer um, to just kind of get in there. And then after that, I can just wipe the outside of the jar with a microfiber cloth. And then it's all done. So, oh, and another thing before I finish off, springtails help to keep the terrarium healthy they eat mold 
algae, decaying plant matter. And they just kind of help to keep everything like nice and healthy. So they're very important to um, keep the healthy environment. And if you're wondering, they get if the, if you need to open the terrarium to give them oxygen, you don't. The plants will provide oxygen for the springtails, and then the springtails will p provide carbon dioxide for the plants. So that's how you can keep it a nice, close environment. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I really like how they turned out. I will put pop up a photo so you guys can see a little bit more clearly and the customer really liked it so I'm glad that the customer liked it which one is your favorite hi and welcome to the vlog so I thought I would start off with opening up this package now this package holds one of the jar terrariums and I know I said last vlog I wanted to test posting it to see if I could um, get it this safely so let's open it up now I, before I open it up, I w thought I would show, I put on quite a few signs hoping that the postman would treat it extra gently. Though I think next time, like, if this is a success, I'll also put down fragile. Just to be safe. So, yeah, let's open this up. Actually, this is tissue. This should be easy to open up. So I posted this first class, so I posted it yesterday and it came today um, and I also put like tracking on it so that I could track it but it came like literally the next day so I didn't have to wait too long. And you can see I've stuffed the box with a bunch of bubble wrap as well as wrapped the terrarium up in bubble wrap as well. And my main concern about shipping it um, wasn't like padding it out and stuff. It was whether like I would be able to ship it without everything shifting about. Um, so I stuffed it with some cling film and a balloon. Though I think um, like as far as I can see it looks good. So I think what I would do next time is put a layer of cling film just so that is kind of protected then tissue paper so I'm not using too much plastic and then the balloon because um, I don't want to put tissue paper right on top because it could soak up a lot of the moisture so yeah I think that's what I would do next time so I thought I would show you how to um, kind of unpack your terrarium when it's received so you can just cut the balloon now this balloon was a quite a small one it was a water balloon which is why it's not like filling up the whole space but imagine like a full-size balloon filling it up and then you would just cut it at the neck so that it would um deflate and then you can take that out and then gently take out the cling film And then that's then like everything is uncovered and what I would then recommend is that when you put it on your windowsill or desk anywhere like with indirect sunlight um, in the morning check if there's any condensation on the sides and in the evening as well check for condensation and as long as there's condensation in the morning and the evening that means you have enough water but if there's condensation like all the way through, that means there's a bit too much water and you're going to want it to air out. Now, when I ship it, it would be, it would have already like established like how much water it needs and everything from when I first made it and had it all closed up. But during shipping, it might dry out. So do look out for that. And there would be with the terrarium, I would send like a bit of a care instructions so that you can, um, look out for things that like to be able to look after your terrarium so yes after this i would just close it up oh and as well things might be a little bit squished from when i put in the cling film um but i wouldn't worry too much about that because once there's space it'll it'll everything will kind of expand and like relax and stuff so you close it back up and wait to see if there is enough condensation. 
Um, and yes, yeah, so another few things that I thought I would mention that is also included um, in the like the care sheet is if you see any little like white um, like insect like things that springtails they were put in there to keep the terrarium free of like mold um, and algae and stuff like that so they're in there to like look after the closed environment and some of the terrariums might have like stowaways like millipedes again millipedes are totally fine they also like eat rotting um, plants and stuff so that's okay so all that information as well as um, some other tips will be available on the care sheet I would send up with the terrarium so let's head to a side view so you can like kind of see what it looks like so here's the side view you can see everything a little bit better and what I'll do is I will keep an eye on the condensation just to make sure that it is okay I mean it was only going through the post for a day so less than 24 hours really but just to make sure that not too much of the um, water and everything got disturbed um so yeah I think that's everything to say I'm really happy that I've been able to figure out a way to post it safely so that will be available by the time this vlog comes out um, I'll be able to post them so I will have a link below in the description for some information if you want to read up a little bit more on the jar terrariums and then also an email if you would like to contact me and I will also put a photo up somewhere on screen of the jar terrariums that are available when this vlog is uploaded. Uh, so yeah, I think that's it. I will see you guys in the next clip and I hope you enjoy this little unboxing. I realized I hadn't talked to like you guys face to face in a while so I thought I would show you guys some things that I bought when I went to town the other day um, and then that'll lead into what else I have to tell you so I got a few things I just got some like clear packaging tape because I was running low on that I got these like um, trays 
there's like three of them in a pack because whenever like I do a project I like to keep the things I like use in um, a couple trays just so that I can then list it in the description of my videos if I film that um, or just to keep it organized and then I was in the pound store um, and I found these like magnetic canvases square canvases and I thought they were really cute so I got a few of them um, I thought they might be nice to use for something in the future and then I also got um, a bunch of um, what you call it um, little glass bottles um, like I can't think of the word I want to use but yeah these tiny glass bottles I got a few sizes these are like the smallest ones I got I hope you guys can see that Um, and I got these because I want to start to make like terrarium charms, um, like necklaces, like pendants and um, earrings. So you can see I've got a few different sizes for like different uses. So like the smallest ones would be the earrings um, and then the largest ones would be like charms and stuff. So... Yeah, I got those and I also got a small pack of organza bags because I thought these would be cute for like packaging um, for like somebody's order. That would be a really cute way to kind of package it up. Um, I also got this case here. It's a bit big. For my moss because my moss collection was growing quite a bit and I needed a bigger case. So it's not a clear case. Um, I w wanted to get a rectangle but the only like nice size I could find was um, a square so that'll do and you'll be able to see in that um, in a little bit just because well I can kind of open it now I guess but I will be making some of these tiny ones like on camera so don't want to tip it too much so this is filled with moss And then now my moss has like a nice amount of space and stuff to, um, so they're not all like squished and being blocked out by each other. And I've got this stick. I didn't buy this. This just came out of our hedge. Um, it's really nice and thin. So I thought this would be good for the, um, terrariums, like the really mini ones. Um, I'm trying, still trying to think of the right word to, for this. Um, so I also got some balloons, uh, so that when the, like, jar terrarium ship, um, instead of just using a bunch of cling film, which is, I also got to pack it, I kind of use cling film as, like, the bottom layer so that, um, the plant shouldn't dry out too much, um, like, just a kind of thin layer of cling film, and then I blow up a balloon in there so that I don't use too much plastic in the packaging um because I, I would have liked to use tissue paper but then that would kind of soak up the moisture and I don't want to like upset the environment in terrarium too much so yeah I also got some of these as well and I got a turkey baster so when I'm putting them into like these little vials there we go the little vials um I can put the I can suck up the springtails and then put them in the vials nice and easily so yeah that's what I bought um so now we can get to making the making the vials up I have some pre-washed already I didn't wash them all because I wanted to um kind of have a test to kind of test the water see if people would be interested um and then what um, I could do is maybe kind of do a pre-order something um when I'm editing I will put some like more information on how you can order them and stuff um like over top of writer somewhere or like kind of do a bit of a voiceover piece so i've got the smallest vials so i'll be really cute as earrings and what well, i've got like another size up i thought this would be a really nice pendant this could be a really nice pendant as well slightly taller nice pendant or like a key ring i don't know how it would survive as a key ring though i have to make sure that i make them sturdy enough so they can't shake about um and then this could be like a nice charm like a hanging charm i mean i guess it could be a pendant it's a bit long 
um, for like a necklace but I think it might be really nice as like a hanging thing that you can hang it up somewhere um, and yeah so I was thinking this more of like charm kind of decor like and then the others are like wearable um, terrariums so um, so yeah so I'm going to start making them um, what I might do is just maybe do a couple on camera and because I think if I'm able to film it right, I'm really struggling to try to film the terrariums properly. I do have a black mat, which I think will help with the reflections. Because um, I think it'll be a really nice YouTube video. Um, and yeah, so, and as well, one of the things when I make these, they'll probably have to, I'll probably have to keep them for a while. Just to make sure that they um, acclimatize properly. I think I'm using the right word. Um... And like as well don't get shaken about so I'll probably have to like kind of test them and wear them and like just see how they fare um so yeah so we'll see if they're available or not by the end of the vlog when I'm editing maybe not but if not you can like follow me on Instagram and Facebook and stuff and kind of like keep track of that so let's get to making and uh yeah that's it so I really like the footage um of me making these terrarium like in vials so I'm actually going to have this as a full YouTube video so I'll just have like a few things um like clips in the vlog and instead of telling you about the process I thought I would just kind of give you a couple updates like terrarium wise so um I haven't attached the jewelry pieces to the corks yet because they still because I had put a little bit too much water when I was putting in the springtails they still need to kind of like evaporate a little bit um and they will be available a little later than originally planned. I was hoping to have them available for like early June. But I'm having, I'll be at a market, um, a mesa market, which I will put like more information maybe up on screen and in the description as well. Uh, so you like, you know where it is if you want to come along. Um, I'll, so I'll be having like the jar terrariums and the charm terrariums as well. And... So I want to make sure I have enough stock for the market. So once I've done the market, then they'll be uh, available online. So do stay tuned for when that is. The market is the 12th of June. So after that, as long as there's some left, it'll be put up available. Um, and if not, I'll probably put up like a pre-order option or something um, after the market but yes yeah, so I have quite a bit to prepare for the market coming up so I just want to make sure that I have enough terrariums and um, like wearable terrariums as well so I don't have to like rush too much as well as like I like to have the terrariums with me for a while before I put them up for sale just so I can just so I can make sure that they are um, that they're acclimatizing well and like nothing's going to die off too quickly or anything but um they're doing very well at the moment they're very happy um everything's nice and green and i look forward to like putting on the jewelry pieces and everything and seeing how that looks so yeah i would say that's um the main update for these vile terrariums um Oh, and I also plan to like make some really cool stands that they can hang off of, like what for when they're being stored. So do look out for that. I'll be kind of like updating things, um, like in the first couple of weeks of June before the market, so you guys can kind of see like what they look like and everything. So if you don't follow me on my social media pages already, please do, so you can keep updated with that. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. I'm really looking forward to pulling them together um, and like kind of seeing what it's like to wear them and everything. I have a few ideas of how I want to set them, things up. And yeah, I really like how they turned out. I think they're so cute and I can't wait to make more. Which one is your favourite? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, so I finished the terrarium charms. I really like how they all turned out. I'll put some photos up because I feel as if like there'll be quite a bit of glare. Um, so that you can see them better. I filmed the whole process for like a future video. So like in the vlog, I'll just kind of have some highlights of like me making them. But it was really nice. It was kind of tricky. Um, well, it was super tricky getting the springtails in. I found that was actually the most challenging part. Um, but apart from that, it wasn't actually too difficult getting everything in 
just kind of cleaning I find cleaning these like the smallest ones was really difficult because if it kind of got stuck up like top and the first like curve it was really tricky to clean um but yeah I really like how they turned out um I don't know if I will have me like putting on the like jewelry pieces and stuff in the cork in the vlog um I don't know if it'll be in the future video either I might try to get that in but um what I'm going to do is I did actually end up putting a bit too much water in these so I'm going to have them open for a little bit just kind of evaporate some of that water and close it up um and then once everything kind of settles a little bit I'll kind of like put the jewelry pieces on and then I will test them out by like wearing them and stuff to see like if they're sturdy enough and yeah so I really like how they turned out um and I think that's really it for now oh I do want to show you one thing so my mom was cleaning up um her succulent like flower box and quite a few of like these leaves fell off so I collected some succulent leaves most importantly these because I want to like make a pot sometime in the future and um, I'm hoping quite a few of these take because I would like them all to have like be flopping over so of course like that will be the biggest one and the rest are pretty far behind I mean these are not too bad and then this leaf that started to grow last year is really very small so it'll be like a work in progress but uh that's what i want to um that's what i want to aim for what i'm aiming for so i thought i would just show you guys that and then this succulent is nice and green all the leaves are pretty much back to what it should be this probably just needs to be pruned off because i don't see that improving but the rest is really good this is nice and healthy um what i will have to do is split these up at some point um and i pruned off like any dead leaves that didn't like take so it was nice and had a nice clean look oh and if you can see that sticking out from the stem that's a branch coming up so that, that's really good i'm really happy about that this is very tiny so that'll be a branch which is really cool and yeah i think that's pretty much all to update you plant wise terrarium wise um yeah so on to whatever's next so i just received this in the mail um since i've gotten quite into building terrariums i wanted to get some tools that would have made it a little bit easier for um for me to make them in the jars especially if they were quite tall so I got these um, tweezers and stuff so it's got tweezers in here some scissors and then this like shovel thing um, and I got this from Aliexpress I was searching under aquarium tweezers and like scissors um, to find to find them um, I got them off of Aliexpress because I didn't want to to get them here was quite pricey um, and I didn't want to dish out too much cash um, yet so it came with six pieces three tweezers two of the scissors and then this shovel thing in this case the case is really comfortable the straps feel nice and strong um, it was packaged really nicely each each tool came with like its own plastic sleeve oh and they're also stainless steel and then they've got some of them have got these little um plastic things on them and I decided to keep it because when I take them off they open up like that and I don't want them to stretch out sorry about that um the wind blew open my door so I don't want them to stretch out the elastic in the case so I'm just keeping on these little plastic bits on the tweezers to keep them closed and then the curved scissors um had one on as well the straight one didn't so I've got um I can't remember the names of the tweezers but I'll put them up on the screen as I show them so I've got this tweezer which is quite like fine 
and it opens up nice and wide and it feels really good it's got a nice weight and everything to it and then straight scissors got a straight tweezers this one's got a bit of a thicker point compared to this one and it's a bit bit longer as well by a few centimeters and then I've got a curved scissors This shovel thing, which I guess would be useful for like moving around sand and stuff or like dirt. I don't know if I would use this a lot in the jars. Um, I'm not too sure. This just came with the set. Um, so I wanted or I wanted the scissors and the tweezers that came in the set. So I had this as well. And then I've also got a curved tweezers. So this should make it nice and easy to work in much like taller bottles because uh, I would like to make some terrariums in like bottles as well which is why I got these because they were quite long necked and I knew I wouldn't be able to use my um, regular size tweezers. So like I don't use this one in my terrarium bills but the others that I do they're this length and you can see the difference. So yeah, it would, the maneuverability would be completely different. So that's why I got these. And um, yeah, I'm really happy with the purchase. It came really quickly. I don't even think it's been a month um, since I got these. It might be just over a month, but it was really quick, um, especially since, you know, it's coming from afar. Um, and I'll put the link below, like as long as the listing is still there, if you guys are interested in getting like this set they also have a few different sets and by the way I'm not sponsored or anything I just thought I would share this with you guys so you can see um, how I've kind of upgraded in tools and I really like this case it's really nice it's nice and flat it won't take up a lot of space and um, there's also a spare elastic in the middle so I guess if I ever get anything else I can put it in here that's like long oh and the measurements for most of these are I'll give it out in centimeters so like the scissors are both 25 the straight tweezers and curved tweezer are 27 this shovel here is like 30 31 centimeters and then this smaller um tweezers like finer tweezers are 25 centimeters oh and i've also what i thought was quite nice is that the tweezers have kind of like a gripped edge i don't know if the camera will pick that up but it's kind of got like grips on it which will probably be mean it's a bit easier to hold things um i guess i'll see um i'm hoping to practice with these over the weekend um as long as i get any other like um stuff done before like my deadline so yeah if um hopefully if i do i can do this over the weekend then i can like film it and have it in the vlog um so we'll see but if not maybe i'll film it and put it on youtube or something because i would like to just kind of have on video how it is to move with these but yeah so i think that's it um oh another thing is so the tweezers are mostly for the build and everything but the scissors are for when i need to like prune things back in my other terrariums that are already like made um and yeah just in case that wasn't obvious so that is it it just zips up like so the handle might be a little bit short but to be honest I think it's fine like 
um i've got pretty big hands like pretty long fingers and everything but it's nice and comfortable for me to hold so i think that's cool and again i really like the width of it it's not wide at all so it means you can really slot it into a place and it won't take up too much space so i really like that about it about the case and everything so um yeah that's it it's been about three weeks since I started to collect the Venus flytrap seeds so I thought now would be the time to sow them since I have a decent amount. So I'm soaking some peat soil in rainwater. I'm using peat soil because they don't like nutritionist nutrition filled soil and rainwater because tap water will kill it but if you don't have rainwater you can get distilled water. Um, and I soaked the peat soil until it was very boggy and I left about kind of half of the tray full of water because the containers I'm putting them in aren't airtight and they do like a humid environment to like start to germinate so um, I left quite a bit of water in the tray and then I sprinkle the seeds like evenly kind of split it up I'm using two containers just to make sure that in case one of them gets mold or something the other one will hopefully survive um, and yeah, I have gotten Venus flytrap kits before, but one had the seeds completely crushed and then the other one, now that I look at the seeds I've collected, don't look like Venus flytrap seeds. The ones in the kit were round, but the ones I've collected are teardrop shaped, so I don't even know if those are Venus flytrap seeds. But thankfully my mum got me these plants and I can collect my own seeds. So they are up on a windowsill so that they can get as much heat as possible in the conservatory and I'm hoping that by the next future vlog I'll be able to show you guys some germinated Venus flytrap seedlings. So I thought I would just show you guys a quick update of how um, the outside terrarium is doing. So it's doing pretty well um, apart from the fact that when I had it like closed for a long time there was quite a build up of mold on like this large branch if you can kind of see like behind there, all that white stuff so um i'm thinking i need to just keep on putting in more wood lice um there's also like quite a few different funguses like there's a slime mold here um i can't remember the name of it i have to put it up on screen i'll zoom in so you guys can see a bit closer but apart from that there wasn't like too much issues the moss is doing okay um i would prefer if i could have kept it closed keep the moss moist but we've got quite a bit of rain and i just leave it open to get rained on since it's open for so much like so long but since it's been kept open for a while i do think the mold has gone down and then another thing that i've had to put in here is some ladybugs here's one because there was some aphids on one of the plants so um my mom and i just collect up ladybugs and pop them in now they do keep on escaping of course because you know i have to open it but that's why we're just going to put them in kind of daily every other day kind of thing whenever we're able to find them because there was quite a few aphids on this plant but it seems to be kept down and what's really nice is that there has been some eggs laid, um, some ladybug eggs, which means that there will be lava in the box at some point, as long as like everything hatches well, um, which should mean that if any aphids do kind of crop up, that should be kept down. Oh, and there's the other one. So there's two in the box at the moment. And what we do is when we collect them up, we leave it open all day and then like we will dump in whatever we've collected in like a jar so that like you know they can't escape d during the day um, and then they can clean things up oh and there's the third one don't know if you guys can see underneath that leaf oh there's actually two underneath there oh so there's four in the box at the moment yeah so I've got four in here at the moment um, and yeah, so I thought I would just give you guys a look. Um, you can check out the video where I built it so you can see what it looks like at the start. So this one flowered. Um, then this one was flowering when I put it in, but the flowers like were closed up so we cut the stalks off so the plant wasn't like 
using up too much energy on that. The ferns are growing quite nicely. Um, that dead nettle in the corner, top corner is growing nicely. So all the plants are doing pretty well. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. So, um, I will end the vlog here. I don't think there's anything else um, I need to tell you about the terrarium. Um, and yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. Um, I can't actually remember what I have, like what clips I have. So um, I can't really do like an overview. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the vlog. If you did, please do give a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Um, click the notification bell if you're a new subscriber so you don't miss a video. I upload every Friday and I will see you guys next week for a podcast. Thanks for watching. Bye!